Welcome to the examination based conduct session. The subject is learner support, school readiness, diversity and multi-grade teaching. DJP LSS DM 11, year one, semester one. Dear students, Welcome to the presentation of 2018 examination. This presentation is for the whole year, exam based. My name is Matilda Kauli Olenweshihepo, the tutor for this subject. This presentation will guide you in your preparation for the examination for this subject. It is very important to point out the most important preparation that you have to do as follows. First, work through your study guide with care and diligence. Do all the learning activities in the guide and then check the answers given at the end of each module. At each module, there are activities and the answers are given at the, at, the, at the end of the module. So make sure that you understand the activities. Take enough time for that. If you have not understood the study guide and its content, you may have difficulty with the preparation for the exam. So you make sure that you understand carefully the activities that is given for you to make it for the examination. You must understand each unit in, in depth. So you must understand each unit very carefully. The following is important information for your examination. The examination format, it takes two hours and it's 100 marks. The exam scripts consist out of five questions. And it is important that you answer all the questions. Even though you don't know the question, try to answer it. You might get some points there. So don't skip out any question. The study materials that you must use is the IOL study guide for pre-primary diploma in education year one semester one and or your Kindle. Those are the only two study materials that you must use for this examination. Understanding the questions. Every part of information can be assessed in a number of different ways of questions, such as you'll find a question that you are asked to explain. When you are asked to explain, you should describe something and indicate the relationship between the things. So you, you describe it. To last, you present a list of facts in a certain order that is given in the book. To define, when you ask to define, you give the precise meaning of something based on the concept. So which means that based on the question that is asked. When you ask to discuss, you should give a clear description by pointing out positive and negative features. To distinguish, you point out clearly the differences between the two sets. And then we go to the examination cover page. When you receive your question paper, there will be 
the examination cover page. Now on the examination cover page, there are, there are student details which should be filled in. Your student number, it's very important, don't forget your student number. Then you write, you fill in your surname and your first name, and you also write your ID number and the examination center, the center where you are writing your exam. Those are very important. And then you'll find the instructions on the examination cover page. So now what you must do with the instruction is, you must read the general instructions and the examination instructions carefully and ensure that you know what is expected before you start with your questions. You are not permitted to take any form of notes into the examination room. Otherwise, you will be disqualified. Plan your time wisely and write as quickly and neatly as possible. If you write neat, it's very much easier for me to see, to read your, 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 your work. But if you write untidy, your work must be right, but because of the handwriting that I cannot read, you might lost some points there. So please make sure that you write neatly. Make sure that you watch the time to ensure that you finish on time. If time permits, read through your answers to correct possible mistakes. So you can, maybe if you are if you are not sure about a certain question, so you can, you can uh, go through to the other question, and then once you are done with all your questions, you can go back to those questions that you left out, and then you can try. You might get it correctly. Make sure that you answer all the questions. Very important. Write your answer on the lines provided in the question paper. So on your question paper, there are lines. So space for you to fill in the answers. The quantity of lines given will also help you to determine the length of your answers. So the answers that is given, the the the. the Answer your answer that you are going to write in the provided lines will lead you to the correct uh, to to the correct uh, answer, and the marks are also given. Also, look at the marks allocated to each question to know how many facts to write to obtain the correct marks. So we are finished now with the basic information. Now we are going over to Unit 1. Unit 1 is about the basic features of learning support. So in Unit 1, there are some topics that I'm going to point out. But okay, you make sure that you know all those topics but you can also learn the others. They might be also important. So 1.1, know the principles of learning support programs. So what are the principles of learning support programs? Know the difference between the remedial teaching and the learning support teaching in a table format. So when you are asked to write in the table format, so you draw a line, and then on the one side, the left side, you write remedial teaching, 
and in the other one you write the learning support and then you write the differences the differences is where do they differ Then 1.3 is when are the learners entitled to learning support? So how do you identify those learners that need learning support? When are they when when should a learner need learning support? The responsibilities of the parents and class teacher in a learning support programs. So here is you should know the responsibility of the parents. What are the because the respons the parents are also having the uh, responsible uh, the responsibilities at schools for the learning support programs as well as a teacher. So know the responsibilities of 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 a parent and also the responsibility of a class teacher in a learning support program. So what should they do the parents and the teacher in the learning support programs 1.5 is how a teacher should provide holistic learning support in a daily lesson so when you as a teacher prepare your your, your daily lesson you should look this child as a whole so what should you provide what everything should you write in that daily lesson so you look a learner in a holistic way so 1.6 the features of the right brain dominant learner so in this way is the right uh, uh, the, the right brain dominant learners how do you know, how can you figure it out, you as a teacher, that this one is a, uh, is a right brain dominant learner? So you should know the features of that. And know the different concepts of dominance. So there are different concepts of dominance, so you should know them. So these are very important in unit one then we go over to unit two and unit two is the need for and features of particular activities of learning support so every learner has a need so that this is basically about this unit two now know the the policies that guide inclusive education. So in education, we have inclusive education and it has policies. So know the policies that guide to inclusive education. And then you must also know the definition of intelligence. So what is intelligence? So you should know how to define it. And 2.3 is you should know the signs of, 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 of a learner who are sexually abused. When you as a teacher sit in the classroom and only by seeing this learner, when a learner do some of the things, then you must know that no, this child is sexually abused. So there are signs, so know those signs. And then 2.4 is you should know the eight criteria of gardener's intelligence. So know the eight criteria, the criteria of gardener's intelligence. So there are eight criteria. So know those eight criteria. 2.5 is know the, the main barriers to educational facilities for learners with disabilities. In the education system, we have uh, barriers. So barriers, it's the things 
that makes it difficult né, for learners with disabilities. So make so you should know the barriers. And then 2.6 is know the early warning signs of a preschool learner. So the preschool learner they have the warning signs. So you should know those signs. And then last in unit two is know the common learning disabilities. So we have different learning disabilities. So you should know the common learning disabilities. So this is all what you must know in unit 2.7. In Unit 3, Unit 3 is about the theory and the activities of school readiness for pre-primary learners. As you know, the pre-primary learners, they need the school readiness. So school readiness is very important to them. Now, there are some things that you should know, that, that you should know, highlight it for me. So 3.1, know their readiness skills and their examples. So there are readiness skills and their examples. So you should know all of them and their examples. And 3.2 is the stages of spelling development. So you as a, as, as a teacher, and you are now in the pre-primary class. You are teaching these kids the first time for spelling. So you should know now the stages of the spelling development. There are different stages that you should follow. So know those stages. And know the definition of school readiness. What do we mean? about school readiness. And 3.4 is know the activities that promote visual memory skills. The visual memory skills is about the learners that have visual problems. They cannot see nicely. So now, which activities will you use in order for you to promote this learners. So 3.5 is know the pre-literacy skills. So we have also pre-literacy skills, so you should know this. And how to develop learners phonic awareness skills. You as a teachers, there are some stages that you follow to develop learners for for, uh, for, uh, for for phonetic awareness. So know the phonic awareness skills. And 3.7 is know the methods on how to teach sentences using flashcards. So when you, this, uh, remember that unit three is about the school readiness. And school readiness, it's, 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 it's their first year. So you should know all this. From first step, step one, you use this, step two, step three, up to the last stage. So this is all what you should know in unit three. We go over to unit four. Unit 4 is about the relevant theory. It is the theory and its application in order to address diversity in classroom. What do we mean by this? In classroom, we have the theoretical part and we have different types 
of learners in our classroom. So how do we address these learners? These learners are not at the same stage. So there are the fast learners and the slow learners. But then you should accommodate all these learners. So 4.1 is know the six areas of inclusive classrooms which address diversity. 4.2 is know the features of positive behavior management. You as a manager, as a teacher, you are a manager in your classroom. So there are some positive behaviors that you should use in order for you to get your classroom in order. So you should know this, the, these features. Know why some learners disrupt or misbehave in a classroom. Sometimes really you come in the classroom, every time is only the speed of this pole that is disrupting this classroom. So you should, you have to go into depth and know why is this Peter having this behavior. Maybe Peter is not getting some attention from home, or maybe he's looking for your attention. So you should know all these things. 4.4 is know the nine major types of adaptations for lessons. Yes, as a teacher, you do your 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 lesson preparations. So you must know the nine major types of the lesson adaptations. And 4.5 is know how a junior primary learner with learning difficulties can be dis uh, can be supported. So junior primary learners the way we have we we the way we 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 help these learners they we help them in different ways so now this learner has a learning difficulty so which means that and this learner it is a junior primary learner so you should know how to help or to support this specific learners. So know the different ways. 4.6 is know the characteristics of intellectually gifted learners. As you are teaching your classroom, you have, as, as I said it in uh, before, you in your classroom, you have learners of different uh, abilities. So you have the fast learners and you have the slow learners. So now, these fast learners, it is the, the, the intellectually gifted learners. So what are their characteristics? How will you as a teacher identify these learners? And 4.7 is know how to support learners with visual impairment. Visual impairment is these learners, they cannot see. So now, you as a teacher, how will you support these learners? 4.8 is know the guidelines to establish a positive disciplinary environment in your classroom situation. So as a teacher, you should have a discipline in your classroom. Now, how will you establish a positive disciplinary uh, uh, environment in the classroom? So you should know all those things. They are very important, but so the others, you can also have a look to that because as you are reading to these things, you will also be curious to know about the other topics that I did not mention. So it's also important to know them. Then we go over to our last, uh, our la last unit. It is about the theoretical aspects and practical activities of multi-grade 
teaching. Five point one. What should you know in this one? Because uh, first of all, what is multi grade teaching? So, multi grade teaching is you teach two grades together in one class. Say, for instance, you uh, grade one and two. You, when you put these together, then it's called multi-grade teaching. Now, what should you know in this one? 5.1 is, know the advantages for learners and the teachers for multi-grade classes. As a teacher and as learners, they have advantages. So there are good things about multi-grade uh, teaching for both learners and teachers, so know that. Know the challenges on how to overcome multi-grade classes. Yes, obviously, there are challenges. So you should know how, if this challenges come up, how should I overcome it? So you should know that. And 5.3 is, you distinguish between multi-grade and mono-grade. To distinguish is you make a difference. So what is multi-grade class? So and then what is a mono-grade class? So you should know multi-grade class, as I say it, is when you say, for instance, is grade one and grade two class together. And then the mono-grade class, it's only a full-grade class of, say, for instance, like 40 learners uh, of grade 1 or 40 learners of grade 2. So these learners, they are not mixed up. So this is the mono-grade class. And multi-grade class is when you combine the grade 1 and grade 2 together, or grade 3 and grade uh, 4 together. So then is the multi-grade class. 5.4 is know how to overcome the challenges of multi-grade classes. So 5.5 is Know the typical questions to ask when planning a lesson for multi-grade teaching. So you should know the typical questions when you are planning a lesson for multi-grade teaching. It's very important. So you have challenges, so you should know how to ask the questions also. 5.6 is know the seating arrangements of multi-grade classroom. So as a multi-grade classroom teacher, so you are sitting with grade one and grade two class together, so you should know how should you arrange your learners in your class. So 5.7 is know the three steps how to design multi-grid classrooms. So there are three steps, so you should know those steps. And 5.8 is know how assessment records are kept in the junior primary phase for different subjects. So we have the uh, assessment records, so, so which means that you should know how um, how will I keep this record as a junior primary uh, 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 teacher? So you should know this. And we know that junior primary teacher, it is a class teaching, so you have different subjects. So you teach the kids all those subjects. So you should know how to assess the records and how they are kept. So this is all what you should know in Unit 5. And that is the, ba uh, the basically our last unit. Okay, in conclusion, 
now I know that you now you know what is expected from you make sure that you know the venue of your exam where you are going to write and the time when you are going to start you might be la late for your exam so please make sure and consult the IOL offices for 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 for, for the venue and the time so which means that obviously you will need your timetable and on your timetable these things will be there so do not contact me please, uh, please because I will really not know about all these things so should you need help from me the help from me this I mean that anything anything concerning the subject content you are welcome to phone me on 081-273-9802 or you can also send me e uh, send me email on Matilde Chiepo at, uh, at gmail.com so that I can answer you in a well-constructed way. Sometimes you might call me and maybe I did not answer your call. Please leave a message and maybe you send me a, an email and i did not respond you say for instance it's now three hours and i did not respond you then uh, uh, please try to call me but then when you call me call me um after three till eight o'clock please so that is the time that you that you should call me so uh, okay, but weekends, uh, Saturday, uh, Sunday, uh, Saturday, you can call me to uh, morning hours. So Sundays, you can call me also uh, from 3 o'clock because morning time I used to be in church. So good luck and all the best with your examination. <music>